Welcome to the French Riviera here at the Côte d'Azur. We are in beautiful Antibes, known for its beaches, but also for a beautiful old town area. So let's explore beautiful Antibes here in the Côte d'Azur, only about a 20 minute train ride away from Nice. Nice is a great, excellent base of operations. If you're traveling here throughout the Côte d'Azur, it's kind of centrally located. Caen in the, in the way as well. This is close to Caen too, about another 10 to 20 minutes away by train. Join me, I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist. Right now we are at the ramparts of Antibes. Antibes used to be called Antopolis back in ancient Roman times. The Greeks were here before then and many other people groups all the way since back the Iron Age, people were here in Antibes. Right down there we see the star-shaped fort which we can also visit. Has probably very cool views. This is also the land of Picasso. That's right, Angela. Picasso uh, was based here. And also, one of my favorite artists was based here. Um, he was uh, raised in this town and after listening to his music, I can realize, oh, yeah, yeah, I can see how he was inspired by Antibes. It's not clear, but if you listen closely, there's a lot of sunny vibes in his music. This, ladies and gentlemen, of course, is M83. So, okay, Google, play Midnight City by M83. Alexa, play Midnight City by M83. Yeah, piece from Antibes, along with Picasso and many other people. Well, Picasso was based here, at least. Nicole, nice to see you here. Oh, welcome. So that is the Ferris wheel we just rode. It was a surprisingly short ride, six euro. I was expecting it to be there at least <laughs> 10 to 15 more minutes. That was end up being a six minute ride for six euro. Okay, nice to see you here. Hello, Ron. Hello, Nicole. Tamara. Mater, nice to see you here. Justine says that's funny, yeah. Here we're starting to see the old town Irish pub. You can't you can't be in Europe without an Irish pub. You can't be in the Western world without an Irish pub. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Nice to see you here. So on T, but let me show you where it is on the map. On T also gives me Puerto Rico vibes. A lot of places have been reminding me of Puerto Rico, but uh, this place specifically, because A, you have these ramparts, very typical in parts of Puerto Rico, including El Viejo San Juan, Old San Juan. Let's walk over to that sculpture. It looks really cool but also because of the architecture. A lot of the architecture looks similar to Spanish colonial architecture. So I wonder what was the overlap, especially those, uh, these, the, these rooftops. I'm not sure what do you call them, tiled rooftops. So this is where Antibes is located in France, in the Côte d'Azur. You see the blue marker that is Nice. Took a train from Nice all the way to Antibes. 20 minute ride. A little bit longer, it depends on if you take the fast train or the slow train. And a little bit bigger overview of the area. We're very close to Caen. Blue marker is, that blue marker is Nice. Uh, and then uh, you see San Remo right there, that is Italy. So Monaco is between the blue marker and Italy. And then further down, we have Toulon, which is popular also for uh, jet setters. Probably the more richer areas of popularity, aside from Monaco, is probably more towards Toulon and Saint-Tropez, which is after Caen. And then further out of the map, just outside of the map, we have Marseille, which is the second biggest city in France. And he says all port, port cities usually have fortifications. Indeed, but not all of them have preserved them that well. Puerto Rico is one of the best preserved 
fortifications from that era, from the 1500s, 1600s. And uh, here we visit Avignon, one of the most completed walls from the Middle Ages. And then previously we visited, what was the place I visited that had a cool wall? Kester, Kester had a wall in England, but I was uh, unable to live stream there. Hello, Chris, nice to see you here, welcome. Angela says, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for taking us along. My pleasure, Angela, I'm so glad. I can take you along. Susie says, listen to Puerto Rico's voice. She's calling you. I think so. I have no doubt that La Isla de Encanto is calling my name. Oh, what we have here. A beach. Oh, this looks like a nice beach. I like the style of this one. This seems also like a very kid-friendly beach too because it's banked right here. All right, so let me do some parkour to get down there, okay? So I gotta like jump here, bum, 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 keep on running, bum, hit the wall, and then uh, grab onto the fence because that, that the stairs are pretty low. Grab onto the fence, drop to the stairs, and then keep on running. Okay, so you got that? Are you guys, are you guys ready? Um, parkour was born in France, at least the, the modern version that we all know. If you don't know what parkour is, it means street running, basically. Justine says, James Bond style. So yes, that fort, I'm so glad you mentioned James Bond, that fort was featured in Never Say Never Again. I don't recall ever seeing Never Say Never Again. I never saw it. But a lot of James Bond movies, I kind of forget. Does anyone actually remember any James Bond film? I mean, it's such an iconic character, but I cannot tell you too much about any plot of any James Bond film. I don't remember most of them. Teacup says you can't rec uh, grab onto anything in parkour. I think you can, yeah. Um, at least in Minecraft. That's funny, Teacup. I think in... Um, in, in parkour competitions, yeah, you can grab onto railings and ledges. But there's no pathway to this other part of the ramparts. Oh, kind of sucks. Maybe I gotta go this way. Uh, Kieran says, uh, I mean, Keenan says, uh, we remember the beginnings. Yeah, basically, yeah. Nexus says, I do remember Thunderball. Okay. Susie says, James Bond themes is what I know. Ludo says, uh, James Bond just gets the girl. That's all I know. Goldfinger is the best, says uh, Chris. Gold Member by Austin Powers is really good. Susie says, to live and let die. That is a guru. That's probably the best James Bond song made. Let me know, ladies and gentlemen, what's your favorite James Bond movie? Mine is, what's the last one that Pierce Brosnan made? I always forget the names. Miss Love says, oh, Ariel, stop. <laughs> hey, Teacup, nice to see you here. Nebul, nice to see you here. Nebul was so kind enough to give us local tips yesterday. Check out that live video afterwards. We ate some soca and other Niswa treats, snacks. Niswa means a person from Nice because Nicene is someone from the Middle Eastern area. Mika, bonjour. 
The character Oddjob on Goldfinger is my favorite since Mark. Ah, interesting. Nicole says, I like Casino Royale. Oh, that's cool. Hello, Sue. Sue Ellen from Paris. Sue Ellen, nice to see you here. During the pandemic, I binge watched all of the James Bond films that Sue's Wow. Oh, that's impressive. I was gifted a James Bond DVD collector set when I was a teenager. I still can't tell you what happened in any of the James Bond films. Hello, David from San Francisco. Nice to see you here. My favorite James Bond films are the Sean Connery ones. Oh, I'm so glad that's the case. Here's the marina. Let me know which boat shall we rent. Let me know what you think. Should we go for a small one, speed boat? Should we go for one that re resembles the ones from Jaws? Should we go on a older style yacht or should we go for the mega yacht down there straight up cruise ship with the helipad <laughs> uh oh it might actually rain after all Ooh. oh it smells like gasoline i'm feeling rather high Chris says that the one at the end is called the Latvia and it's $168,000 per week. That's cool that you can rent yachts. Ooh, I like this one. Wow, this one's nice, the Sun Reef. There's a plank, look at that plank. Ron says my robo is on the other side. Robo, ooh, interesting. I really like this one. Wendy asked me, which one do I like? I like this one. Wow. I like the deck. That's a huge deck. You know what they say with people with big yachts? They have big decks. I mean, literally, it's a big deck. Yeah. I mean, we all ultimately know that owning a yacht is a big deck measuring contest. I mean, it's obvious. It's obvious. Like, why else would you get a yacht? You're not going to measure the bow. You're going to measure the deck. How big is your deck? My deck is bigger than yours. And there we go. You're the top man in the marina. Andy says, big deck, small captain. <laughs> So that sounds like a, a movie in uh, explicit film. Sounds like uh, one of those erotic films from 1970s France. It had a more 
a romantic name in French, but when you translate it to English, it was just big deck, small captain. Look at this one, wow. Hey, Action Kid is tuning in. Action Kid, nice to see you here. Action Kid says you get a boat to measure the size of your sail. Yep. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in, Action Kid. Hope you're doing well. Ms. Lop says that guy was out there swabbing his deck right in front of everyone. Right, exactly. Let's give you a good uh, wipe down. <laughs> oh, said. Oh, like I'm gonna turn your comment into a joke. What did the, what did the millionaire ask the? Okay, I'm gonna make this into a good joke. What did the millionaire DM via Instagram to the billionaire? He said, "Send me a picture of your big deck." <laughs> That's uh, courtesy of uh, Oleg for, for uh, leaving that comment. Uh, RJ says, sorry, uh, I tuned in late. Where's that one? The helipad right there. Uh, Diaz says, is masticating allowed on deck, even if uh, there's a lot of semen around? <laughs> it just, you just got to watch out. With, you know, when the semen are present, uh, you do have to keep mastication at bay. There's have to go down, down to the lower decks for that. Chris says, these yachts have big crews. Imagine how many people work on that yacht. I heard it's good money. I heard uh, the people who work on yachts actually make a good living. So here's our artwork. This is um, Joan Plensa's Nomad, made in 2010. It's part of the Museum of Picasso. Mark says, oh my God, this humor now is below deck. Andy says, helicopter too, I'm impressed. This must belong to an oligarch. Andy, I am the oligarch. <laughs> uh, come on, folks. This is a serious show. Indeed, it is uh, Diaz. Beautiful. So here it says, this place is under video control. Please respect the work. It is strictly forbidden to climb up the sculpture. Your vigilance is required. And they have a little stick figure falling off to his death because he decided to climb the sculpture. Oh, I get it. It's like a womb. You enter the womb. Let's enter the womb. This all says, can you walk inside? Well, I'm doing it right now. I'm not sure. It didn't say anything against walking inside. Justine says, it's all letters. Indeed it is, yeah, just letters. Yeah, pretty. Yeah, same, same type of metal that you would use in a fence. All right, let's exit. Let's do a rebirth. Oh, there we go. Oh, that was so good. You know, when I went to Monaco, I didn't get a crown, but I'm glad I crowned over here. That was nice. Uh-oh. A storm is coming.
<laughs> Miss Love says, I'm glad you didn't breach. Yeah, but it seems like the water is breaking down here. Cynthia says, good morning from Staten Island. Have a replay. Oh, thank you so much for tuning in, Cynthia. Hope you're doing well in Staten Island. Okay, everyone, this is a serious show. So we now we got to cut the cord on these jokes, okay? Okay, it's time to get serious. We're snipping that, that cord of the jokes. Ludo says, can you visit a yacht? In all seriousness, I actually don't know anyone who owns a yacht. I don't know who to reach out to. There probably is yacht companies I could reach out to. So I gotta I got try that next time. Thank you for mentioning that. Yeah, the more I travel, the more I realize, oh, I can reach out to maybe these companies. I can reach out to that company and do live videos in places like these. I don't have enough time for this weekend, but uh, I'll keep that in mind. If I ever go to, when I go to a place that has yachts around, I'll reach out to a yacht company, see if they're down to give me a live tour. Chris says, uh, the person I know that owns yachts also owns hotels, and he took us from Newport to Catalina Island, and the fuel alone was $2,000. He did write it off as a business expense because he was entertaining. Yep. That's cool, Chris. I hope you enjoyed that, that trip. That's all, that sounds awesome. How was the yacht experience? Do let us know. Ms. Love says that, that yacht is a bit much. <laughs> well, I think uh, once you start reaching a few hundreds of millions, I think uh, why not get the entire deal? So, oh, his name is in Spanish. Juan Plenza is a contemporary Spanish sculptor born in Barcelona in 1955. The simple huge cast iron sculptures he made in the 1980s made him famous. He then progressively moved to sculptural in, in installations using light, sound, and language. In 1997, a Plenta retrospective was held at the Jeux de Paume National Gallery in Paris. Since then, there are other big exhibitions that have been ex organized in European museums. Plenta has gained international recognition in the last few years, no notably after public commissions in the United States, Canada, and Japan. All those still living in Barcelona, Blenza has also lived and worked in Berlin, Brussels, England, and at the Henry Moore Foundation as well in France. Wow. So it says it used the former vocabulary developed by the artist over the last few years based on letters. With this vocabulary, Plenza is suggesting that beyond its simple mission of communicating a meaning, spoken or written language can also be seen as a kind of envelope covering the matter and energy that constitutes us. 
Like bricks, he says, letters have the potential for construction. They enable us to construct thoughts. Ooh, wow. Plentz's large nomad, which visitors can get inside, invites us to travel within it, reaching beyond its constitute materials, its space, all emptiness and silence, opens up to a sea that spreads out before it like a gigantic figurehead on the prow of the bastion of the sound, Jaume. Wow. And here I thought it was a, a allegory for birth. Slob says they missed the whole birth metaphor. Yeah, yeah, I can't believe it. It's not about the transience of words and its power to construct thoughts. No, it's clearly about birth. I wonder if they had to place the uh, letters in such a way that spells anything. It could be, it could be like a huge... Um, what is that called when you have to seek out words in a huge block of letters? Do let us do let us know what the name of that is. The clouds are so beautiful. Yeah, they are. Yeah. One of those rare cloudy days here in the south of France. Anagram. Thank you so much. Word search. Thank you so much, Tamara. That's the official name. Word search. Enneagram is just changing the letters of one word. All right, let's go to the old town. Chris says, can you find your name? That'll be difficult. Object there. It smelled very rancid. Hello, Oleg. Nice to see you here. Hello, Ashley. Nice to see you here too. Marianne says it's such a beautiful day. Yeah. Dia says, what the hell was that? I have no idea. It, just, it smelled very rancid. Uh, it didn't look like much, but it smelled very rancid. I'm not sure what it was. Chris says most of these yachts have their own webpage. Really? Oh. Sue Ellen says, first time I see your bio. Interesting. Oh, thank you, Ellen. I'm glad you find it interesting. I love the cute umbrellas, says Justine. Yeah. Pete, thank you so much for tuning in. Katrina says, you need your hat. It's cloudy. No, almost no sun. No need for a hat at the moment. Diaz says it definitely reminds me of Fort San Juan. Yep, yep, it looks very similar to El Viejo San Juan. Andy says, what's the temperature here? The temperatures are dipping. It is a chilly 84 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere around there. 85 degrees Fahrenheit, pretty chilly. 
as opposed to the 92, 93, 94, 97 degrees Fahrenheit it was the past few days. Nightpot saying Avignon, I gotta change that, sorry about that, but it's not 72. Avignon is further up in Provence. C204 says, have you had your coffee yet? I have had my coffee, yes. I actually had one of the best coffees and carrot cakes in my entire trip in the south of France thus far. South of France has not, I've not encountered that much good coffee in South of France. Um, like excellent coffee. But there's a place here called Nomad and it's really good. Marianne says it's only 62 degrees Fahrenheit in upstate New York. Wow, that's cool. That's pretty cold. I'm actually surprised it's that cold in upstate New York. Ms. Love says you like the coffee in the beaker. Yeah, yeah, yes, there was good coffee as well. Ron says, you wonder where all the waste of the bo those boats come go. Yeah, Ron, that's a good point. So the seas and the ocean are always flowing. So I assume waste does not collect too much, at least not very apparent right here. But I don't really like going to beaches right next to marinas or even right next to towns. Never been too much of a fan. Let me know, what do you think? Because Sometimes if you go to a beach that's right next to a marina, it tends to be a bit smelly. And you might even see gasoline. Roxanne says, looks like you lost weight. Oh yeah, Roxanne, I've been on the, on the baguette cheese diet over here. It's been really, really good. So yeah, it's a nippy 82 degrees Fahrenheit right now in Antibes. Oh, we have an Eric Kreuzer over here. Chain of bakeries. Andy says it's the walking around European diet. Yeah, you could call it that too. Oh my God. What the hell? American style deli? The brisket bar? Wow. Look what we found here. Pastrami, hot dogs. A sandwich called the New York Ice. Oh, with pastrami. Oh my God, they made a New York Oh, wow. They're, they're attempting to make a a cat's deli Tucker sandwich. And I survived, uh, well, and, and Elizabeth too. But That's so funny. That's hilarious. Cindy, thank you so much for inviting your friend. Janice, nice to see you here. This lob says, come on, let's try it. All right, let me see how much. Ashley says, I'm confused with English voices and writing. I thought I was in France. Ashley, this is basically, this is basically another county of England, I mean, basically. Uh, you know what? I barely have to use my French here. I, I haven't even bothered learning French, more French, aside from the courtesy words, because everyone knows English here, so that's why. That food is a bit heavy. I don't want to buy that much food to just try a bite or two. Um, so you have to use your imagination of a brisket, because I'd rather walk around and show you more of the town. Islam says that's a fighting word. <laughs> well, it's not that English, but, but yeah, you can get by with English very easily. 
some some businesses. I, when I went to the coffee shop earlier today, they just spoke immediately in English. They didn't even bother with French. Other places, like I went shopping for uh, goods to cook cook at home. Stay tuned at 8 p.m. tonight. There will be a philosophical chat with dinner. I'm making dinner on live video, homemade. Not everything's going to be from scratch, but uh, one thing is going to be from scratch, for sure. And as I was buying those goods, of course, they greeted me in French, but I just started speaking in English, and it was okay. No problem. Got some falafel. Always a good choice when eating on the budget in France. Because good falafel, good shawarma. Good Lebanese places too. Here we have the old town. Neboul says, well in the French Riviera a lot of people know English, yeah. Yeah, that's right, Neboul. Ms. Lobb says, I mean the word cuisine is a French word. I, there's a lot of French words in the English language that we use. Cuisine being one of them. I just realized today, grocery is basically a French word. We have many, many other words. So here's the provincial market. La Marche Provençale. I think they're opening up again. So they switch between uh, fruit and vegetable market and other like goods, maybe there's butchers and things like that. And then they switch over to goods, to craft goods. That's very interesting. Oh my God, look what we found here. Copenhagen Coffee Lab. <laughs> oh wow, we found a Copenhagen Coffee Lab. That is so funny. group says I, I like the the statue oh my god wow this brings back memories wow memories from back in late June visiting beautiful Copenhagen smorteboard smorteboard right here <laughs> that's so funny that they have Oh, they have one with uh, actual cheeses. That's nice. Renee says, when Ariel was younger, yeah, back then, back in the day. All right, let's try it. Bonjour.
Okay, no more rye bread. They ran out. Uh, seems like they had a busy day. That's what the guy said. Uh, so no more rye bread open face sandwiches. No sandwiches, basically. So I end up getting uh, escargot. I haven't, haven't tried these. Same name as the snail because it's a pastry that looks like a snail. So let's try it out. But he gave us a free croissant, uh, which was nice. Gave a free croissant. So this was on the house. It's nice of them. And I gotta grab my coffee. So, oh, I All right. Thank you so much. Okay. So yeah, no no open face rye sandwiches. As I mentioned, if you want to eat like actual savory foods, you do have to watch out between the hours of two to seven p.m. Even some bakeries might start running out of stuff, so you do have to watch out. So do plan ahead when it comes to food, and make your reservations for restaurants. Unless if you're two people or less, and you can show up at seven, and you generally get into a lot of restaurants. So let me know if you're still, if you can hear me. I'm sure you're able to hear me. All right. Let's try this out. Mmm. Oh, wow. What the hell happened here? It's a wedding. It's a wedding. Damn, they got a little. They gotta let everyone know that they're getting married. <laughs> Contrast is oh, the noise pollution. Yeah. We gotta let everyone know that they're married.
okay they stop playing the music. All right. So, nice little coffee, little escargot. This is really good. It tastes like a cinnamon bun. It basically is a cinnamon bun. Uh, basically, a lot of, seems to be some Copenhagen-inspired uh, type of pastry, but done in that French escargot pastry style. This croissant does not seem too optimistic, but it does look good with this with these layers. Yeah, uh, they they uh, are going to some church. It seems like further up, or there might be some type of town. So, yeah, this is City Hall. That's why this is City Hall. So they're getting a civil marriage right here, uh, and that's why uh, the commotion is right here. So this is really good, actually. I really like this. Mm. Oh, wow. It tastes like a really good cinnamon bun. Really well made. Wow. Mika says, this, yeah, it's basically a cinnamon bun, yeah. Cinnamon buns are more kind of like, um, they're not as shaped like that, but wow, that's really good. Now for the coffee. Mm. Yeah, good coffee, good espresso. Very good espresso. And does this count as another urbanist wedding crash? No, not quite. That's to, to actually go get inside. Grant says the escargot refers to the shape. What was the price like? Charge me six something, six eighty euro, something along those lines. I saw Miguel a bottle of water. The croissant was on them, so let's try it out. Mm. It's pretty good. It's heavier. Than, than your typical super light fluffy croissant. Not typical, but the very good super light fluffy croissants that you find in Paris. It's a bit heavier. It's more towards a Cornetto in Rome because it's pretty thick. But if I were to buy this in New York, I would say this is a pretty good croissant. Good enough for a coffee shop, definitely. Lots of butter. Wow. Veronique says, dunk it. There's so little coffee. About one little espresso shot, so I can see if this is dunk worthy. Let's see if the escargot is dunk worthy. Mm, oh. oh wow. That was a really good escargot. Are you allowed to bring any produce from US to France as yes? No, yes. You can't bring any produce. Watch out with um, bringing cheese and hams I also. Um, you can bring processed goods, like jams. I would say, I'm not sure about pate. I'm not sure about those processed meat goods, I'm not sure. But you can bring jams, you can bring butters, you can, not, not dairy butters, you can bring like nut butters, you can bring olive oil, uh, truffle salts, salts, you can, herbs, I think you can bring, but you do have to watch out with pates, with uh, cheeses, with uh, cured meats, with meats, you can't bring meat. That's a big no-no. Uh, produce, big no-no. Fruits, we can't bring. All right. Ooh, that was good. Let's check out the wedding and continue walking around. That was really good. Couldn't finish it all, but I do like it. It's nice. There's better, better bakeries out here, but for good coffee, if you want your coffee with a nice treat, this is a good coffee. Evian, wow. Nothing beats a good Evian water. I love how you say herbs, uh, says Ashley. Yeah, uh, in America we don't pronounce the H. We never say herbs, uh, usually. Usually people say herbs without the H. They, we drop the H in many parts of America. Was it as good as Denmark? No, not really, not really. Uh, it had that, some of that Denmark taste, but no, no. This is was really good coffee. The pastry is probably is better in the city. 
but they're good enough for the coffee. Sometimes you gotta, the thing is some boulangeries here in France, most of them actually, 90% of them sell really bad coffee. It's, it's automatic coffee. They don't tend to be that good. So if you go to a boulangerie, you tend to have shitty coffee. And then if you go to a coffee shop, they tend to have just your basic pastries, not too many good pastries. Here it seems like they have pretty good pastries or very good coffee. And I would say sometimes you just gotta go to a place where they have two, so you don't need to go to the boulangerie, eat the croissant, and then go to the coffee shop and sit down and drink your coffee. That might be a little bit tedious. So these places sometimes are a little bit of a godsend here in uh, France because not like in the US US sometimes coffee shops are so big that I don't I can sneak in my other pastry I, I can bring like a sandwich uh, from another place but here in the France it's a big no-no don't bring food from another place to a coffee shop I would say not don't do that it's not really seen as a nice thing to do in America you could get, get away with it people really don't care all right let's walk around let's go to beautiful Antibes. Make sure the pigeons don't get it. Wendy says, am I getting married? No. <laughs> Susie says, I've sneaked my lunch into many places. Yeah, yeah, in America, coffee shops are pretty chill. So you, you generally, can, if, as long as you buy a coffee, you can bring a pastry from a different place or, or a small sandwich. As long as it's not smelly, generally coffee shops are okay in the US. Same thing applies to Canada or Puerto Rico. But yeah, when it comes to France, don't do that. It's not really seen as a cool thing to do. So here, yeah, here's the wedding. Oh, and the little train. These little trains are all around the cities of France. All right. Oh, here, here's the bride. Oh wow, they have, they have a police protection. Is this a, a known individual? Maybe he's just managing traffic. Okay, now I officially crashed the wedding. Nabil says it's either a Algerian or Moroccan wedding. Ah, interesting. Yeah, I like the dress. So this is Hotel Divil. Hotel Divil means city halls or town halls all around areas of France. Chris has any paparazzi now? I don't think so. I think the police uh, policeman is just uh, managing traffic. Salesman says, wherever they are, I'm now pissed off with all the horse. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, so you guys don't know who that is? Didn't know people got so dressed up for civil weddings, says Susie. Sometimes I think they do both weddings at the same day. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, people do get dressed up for civil weddings. That happens in New York. Justine says Ariel is the paparazzo. <laughs> the sole paparazzo. One paparazzo. Renee says there's going to be a better cafe at the wedding. <laughs> Renee, thank you so much for the super chat. 
oh yeah, at my own wedding ceremony, I'm 100% gonna have a barista. You know, a lot of weddings have a caterer, and of course they hire someone to make the cake. But I'm gonna have a barista there, 100%. Like, I ain't gonna do a wedding without any coffee. It's cold brews are gonna be, uh, and fresh espresso for the guests. Buy that for my home. <laughs> Just imagine you're walking into, you know, I'm, I'm a single man, so you walk into a bachelor, bachelor's home, and suddenly you see that sculpture right there, dead center of the of the apartment. <laughs> what would you think? <laughs> really clearing up. This was full with people just uh, an hour ago. Where did everyone go? Ashley says, where will you be, uh, where will your wedding be? I wonder. Maybe it'll be a destination wedding. Or maybe I'll go all out and marry at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City. So this is the coffee shop I do recommend. The, the carrot cake here is amazing, called Nomads. Highly recommend them. I'm already coffeeed out after the espresso, so I will recommend it. Really great coffee, Nomads. Mark says, are we invited? You know, I, it would depend who I marry. If it's someone who is also a vlogger or television personality, then, then there's a good chance I will. I have live streamed the wedding before. I just gotta find someone as good as me. So boulangeries, boulangeries, if you want hot food at boulangeries, usually you can find quiches uh, and then trator. These are a classic trator right here. So trators are caterers, but uh, in the U.S., usually a caterer would just be doing it for big portions, and usually they don't have a storefront, but in this case, they do. And it's a small little storefront, and you can individual meals that you can uh, bake at home, like a lasagna. Or uh, buy pre-made pastas, in the case of south of France, there's a little bit more cuisine. You can also, like, this is very similar to the American supermarket. Thing is, uh, do let me know, anyone who's been to France, coming to the traiteurs, the caterers, or the Epicity, I don't know how to pronounce the other one, but it's the other kind of grocery market store, they taste way better quality than an American supermarket. Like even if you go to a high quality one, like a Whole Foods, or in New York, there's a few high quality ones, like a Zabar's. Zabar's does some things really good, like the fish, but the, the, the pre-made goods just taste really good at these places. Uh, let me know if anyone has noticed a difference. And I think it, because when you look at the ingredients at the American ones, they have like sugar in like in a tuna salad. I don't know why it's tuna salad needs sugar, uh, which is a bit sad because there's some beautiful supermarkets in New York City 
but they're not that good with those pre-made foods. To me, I feel like I'm kind of just doing it out of desperation rather than truly enjoying a good bite. Swisser left Christine $10 super chat. Christine, thank you so much. Now this butchery really caught my eye. So today, this is what I did earlier in the day. And these guys are selling stuffed rabbit. That's so cool. And home cooked dishes. Wow. That's amazing. So they have different meats. They even had stew. Christine, thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate you. They had the actual Niswa beef stew. I so wanted to find that. I, I wanted to make, tonight I'm not making Niswa uh, pasta, but I wanted to make Niswa pasta because Niswa pasta is pasta with beef stew. Ooh, I couldn't find it uh, where I'm staying. So now I know, maybe I could come back here uh, this weekend and make it on my own. Pistol says vegan is hard to find in France. Pre made, yes. Uh, there is very few tratters or provisioners that are vegan. Uh, I went to a place today, and I'll let you know later tonight. I did find a great uh, bakery that did gluten-free baked goods. Uh, and that's very interesting. But of course, not everything was vegan. So if you want to increase your chances of finding vegan food, try to find a bakery. Of course, breads are not made with butters, at least the basic baguette. Then you just gotta make your own sandwiches. Uh, I'm sorry to say, you gotta do it your own. <laughs> that's the easiest way to be a vegan in France is go to the grocery stores uh, buy a few greens and salads or whatnot and make your own sandwiches, make your own lunch. Teacup says, tell us more about your wedding prefaces. Your audience wants to know. <laughs> I want to have pie from 4 and 20 Blackbirds which is one of the best pies I've ever tried in my entire life. I don't want a wedding cake. I'm sorry for my future partner. Um, if you're a fan of cake, I will only be able to compromise. Well, not compromise, synergize, if it involves red velvet or Brooklyn blackout cake. Otherwise, it gotta be pie. I will get a suit tailor, a tux tailored by Seville Row in London. I will 100% want to do that. Mark says no cronuts at your wedding. You know that that is interesting. <laughs> if it's a if it's a long ceremony, maybe cronuts would be for the beginning. Chris says, "What about your honeymoon? You basically saw. You, if you remember my live videos from last summer, I visit all the places I would honeymoon in." Who's this artist? They have birds on their head. That's nice. Tamara says, coffee plus pie sounds great. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be a morning wedding. Teacup says an Ascot tie. Oh, yeah, that actually sounds a lot better than a regular bow tie. And then at the end of the wedding, we will release doves into the air. Wow, you know, I was here literally right before I went live. This was bustling with people. Wow, people really take, are taking siestas here. Did we just accidentally go into Spain? Where is everyone? 
Ooh, we got a Bouchon. Oh my God, these are rare in the south of France. Bouchons, of course, very popular in Lyon. Bouchons are eateries that focus entirely on the food. They're open, very short hours, 12 to 2, 7 to 9, maybe 7 to 10. And it is very classic Lyonese fare. The Bouchon is really a Lyon thing. And it's awesome to see a Bouchon here. Grant says, have you ever tried um, pigeon? I've tried birds that are similar to pigeon, but no, I've never tried a, <laughs> eating an actual pigeon, no. Uh, I tried a very similar bird. In Puerto Rico, they, they do sell a bird. Uh, I, I'm not sure if it's directly related to pigeon, but it's a small bird. And then um, there was another cuisine. England had like a similar bird as well, so, small bird. Renee says Bouchon. Contrast says, this place looks expensive. And you're not the first person to say that. Antibes, non Antibes is by no means the most expensive area in the Côte d'Azur. That would be, that will go to Monaco, that will go to Saint-Tropez. I've only shown Monaco. Monaco is more expensive, Central Pay is more expensive. But someone just mentioned earlier, South Florida is actually more expensive than most prices you see here in the Côte d'Azur. Yesterday, I went to a beautiful bar in the middle of Monaco to have a beer. Each beer cost me only about eight euro, uh, which is very expensive. And uh, very expensive for the Côte d'Azur. Eight euro is cheaper than New York City. And I heard that in Florida, you spend sometimes $12 for a beer, uh, especially if you're in Miami or in the top places in the beaches area. So I was in the most expensive country in the world, Monaco, and it was only eight euro for one beer. Um, and then when you here, a beer would cost you four euro, a cup of wine, six, seven euro, a good one, eight euro maximum. Um, food here is a bit expensive, but even then, a plate of amazing seafood pasta costs you only about 20 euro. And I say only 20 euro because in New York, you can spend $30 for it. South Florida, especially here in Miami, big cities, also around that price range. Uh, so yeah, yeah, the south of France is actually not going to be as expensive as other top destinations that are similar. So that's very interesting. Tamara, thank you so much for the $20 super chat. I appreciate you. Tamara is so kind to give a $20 super chat. Thank you so much. Terry says stop. Terry, why are you saying stop? Uh, Pistol says boring, nothing to do here. <laughs> Pistol, yeah, I mean, if you want constant entertainment, uh, Côte d'Azur has a few historical sites, but there's not going to be constant entertainment. You could go nightclubbing, if that's your scene, but of course we're in the daytime, uh, so, yeah. Oh, Pistol is referring to Florida, it's uh, not so interesting. 
Which way are we going? Let me uh, check my map. Dia says, who has the best nightlife in, in France? I have not experienced nightlife directly, so I don't know. Lyon probably is not good for nightlife. Um, Provence, I would say not, probably not. I would say nightlife, you're better off going to, to the party cities like Saint-Tropez here in the Côte d'Azur. Nice, there might be some nightlife. All right, let me walk back towards the beach. Yeah, let's do that. It's gonna get a little tricky. Okay. Hey, Kay says, uh, Ben from Kilkenny. Uh, Kay's grandson just passed all the exams. Hey, congratulations, Ben. Uh, glad you passed all your exams. Kick ass. Uh, so round of hearts to Ben for passing all of his, his exams. He watches the show occasionally. And I met him back in Kilkenny. Very nice guy. Thank you so much for tuning in. and hope you're doing well. <laughs> Terry says, I wrote the comment about food. Love your walks. Please do not stop. This is quintessential France. Wow. That's a beautiful shot. I mean, can you get any more French than this? Small little street. Little old lady carrying her groceries, nice couple strolling down the street, vines hanging off the buildings, the sound of construction in the distance. A little Vespa. Susie says, I have a, 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 a roller bag just like that. Yeah, yeah, it's very common here. Good rain. Wow. Oh, so This is a street. Oh my, look at that. Wow, this is Instagram. Wow, that's beautiful. Wow. 
<laughs> Ms. Lobb says, I'm nearly not as discriminate as about coffee as our intrepid host. <laughs> Susie says, perfect for oil painting. Yeah, I mean, Picasso was based here for a while. We're going to head over towards his museum. Teacup says, clever doorknob. Yeah. Okay, that was scary. Ashley says, what's the town called? Antibes, Antibes, A-N-I, and sorry, A-N-T-I-B-E-S. <laughs> Susie says, I think Ariel could direct a great horror film. <laughs> you know, I would never direct a horror film, but I would, I would definitely use those techniques for an uh, action film or adventure film, just like uh, Steven Spielberg did with Jurassic Park or Sam Raimi did with Spider-Man. Oh my God, a beer shop. Oh, let's see if they have my favorite beer. From, from south of France. Let's check it out. Let me know.
Okay, I'm back. I just had to mute because uh, there was popular music in the in the beer store. So they did not have my favorite beer. From um, I forgot the name, so I couldn't tell her the name, but she didn't seem to have it. But we're gonna try another beer from the south of France. I've seen this in a lot of places. It's called Blue Coast Brasserie Artisanal Amber. And let's try it out. Let's see how it is. They have their own glass. This was an official beer store. They had a lot of different beers. This cost me $7.30, which is actually pretty expensive. You can buy this for like two, two euro. I'm not sure why she charged me so much. Maybe because uh, I'm enjoying it here. But let's try it out. Yeah, she charged me a whole lot. Wow. Oh, wow. They're, they're expensive here. They charge eight euro for a draft beer. Oh, okay. So yeah, if you go to a store, you, if you go to a grocery store, you can find this for like three euro maximum. Uh, so let's try it, Blue Coast. It's organic as well, yeah. I think I've discovered my favorite type of beer is definitely uh, amber beer. Uh, it's a, definitely an amber beer. And I also fell in love with the amber beer from the Mont Blanc Bracery, which they had bottles of the Mont Blanc Bracery. Uh, beer inside as well. You probably saw that You may have seen me drink that in um, In my video about Mont Blanc uh, The short one which I'll post on Facebook soon. We'll go to TikTok Ariel Vieira to see that video So let's try this out as we'll explore a little bit more while tea get closer to the Picasso Museum, which is Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's really good. Mm. Oh, mm. wow, that's amazing. Has such a refreshing taste to it. Very crisp. This one's maltier than the other one that I want to show you. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the malty aftertaste. Because I, in my opinion, the maltiness kind of doesn't make it as refreshing. It makes it more heartier beer. So this one's maltier than the other one or the Mont Blanc Bracery one. But it's still really good. Wow. Oh, that's so delicious. I'm, I'm a huge fan now of amber beers. I think amber just is, is the perfect refreshing beer when it comes. And let's see how much percentage this is. 5.3% alcohol and organic. Thirty-three CL. There you go. Cool. Renee, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you, Renee. Looks fruity. Is it fruity? Let's see. Melon, melon, yeah, cantaloupe. Kiwi, those are the notes. Grant says Blue Coast is a good brand, good to know. I'm gonna try to find the name of the other one. So this is my, right now, my third favorite. Number two is Bracerie Mont Blanc. Number one, I forgot the name. I'm gonna search it up. Wendy says, is it very cold? Yeah, it's pretty cold, yeah. Oleg says, I like lemon separately from beer, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just the notes, it's not actual, like, it doesn't taste straightforward as melon. When speaking about notes from beer, coffee, or wine, um, or like honey as well, it's not always going to be straightforward, and it is subjective, but you can get pretty close to what the notes are if someone describes it to you. 
um, when you have multiple people trying the same beer, same wine, they'll come across very similar notes. Like, you can, there's some accuracy in terms of taste. It'll ultimately be pretty subjective in how you describe it, but you can get some accuracy. So someone might say uh, melon, another person might say actually it's more of a watermelon or uh, another similar type of fruit. Do you know, uh, do you know to make Budweiser smooth, they add rice to add a bitter taste? No, I did not know that, uh, Avalon. Thank you so much for letting us know. That's so interesting. Oh, wow. I don't like Budweiser. I don't like uh, Heineken. I'm not sure why Heineken is so popular in Europe. It's not that good, in my opinion. Uh, Wendy says, I like laggers. Laggers are good, yeah. I'm going to check my beer store in Canada, but I, I doubt that they have it, says Miss Lob. Yeah, I don't think these French beers are really popular. Your better bet is finding the Belgian beers that I showed in my show, in my videos in Belgium. Uh, even this place had a lot of Belgian beers. You're, you'll find more of those. Yeah, I don't think you'll find too much of the French brands. These, these brands are pretty much niche microbreweries. Maybe if you, get, if you do get lucky and find Bracerie Mont Blanc specifically, get that one. Try it out. I think you're in for a treat. Diaz says, I got to go. Thank you so much for tuning in, uh, Diaz. Uh, says, uh, thank you, Ariel. See you tonight in the chat. Yes, 8 p.m. tonight. And Lorraine, thank you so much for the 500 stars, Lorraine. I appreciate that. Uh, we drink wine inside of a honeydew here in Chile. Oh, interesting, Renee. Inside of a honeydew. Honeydew is another similar fruit to melon. Uh, Veronique says, I love amber beers as well. I'm so glad you do. Ashton, thank you so much for tuning in. Grant says, uh, Blue Coast is a good brand. Good to know. I'm glad you have f potentially found a new beer you can try. There are some beer stores in the, in, the, in the U.S. and Canada where you can literally find any beer. Or they'll import it for you. So sometimes it is worth asking. Or they might know something that's similar to it. They might know. Some beer stores are really good in, in their knowledge of beer. Visit Strasbourg for local beer, says Renee. Yeah. Yeah, France is big. And there's a lot of mountains between these regions. So the Alps is huge. So even the Côte d'Azur is separated from Chamonix, for example. So there's not really a direct way you can go from Chamonix down to here to the Côte d'Azur. You will have to go around the Alps and then back down. So what I did is I went from Chamonix all the way to Lyon. and Lyon, I took the high-speed train down to uh, Nice, which went down and then along the coast. So it kind of does a big C-shape route. That's the problem with France. So if I wanted to go to Strasbourg, it would take me a long time to get to Strasbourg. It's a long way, way away to Strasbourg. Even driving, you still have to circumvent the mountains. Wasn't it Bracery Mont Blanc, says Grant? Yeah, Bracery Mont Blanc. Uh, that's the one I recommend you asking for. Bracery Mont Blanc. How long did you plan all of these trips? What a wonderful time you're having. That's a great question, Jennifer. Thank you so much for asking. All right, everyone, I'm gonna finish this up. Feel free to ask me any questions. We're gonna continue walking a little bit more along the coast. Maybe show you one beach and show you a little bit more of beautiful Antibes. So feel free to ask me anything uh, as I finish this up. Uh, Jennifer says, how long did you plan? Not so much. I knew, ooh, Sunshine, thank you so much for a $5 super chat. It says, ooh, Antibes, one of my favorite cities. I'm so glad you think so. I did not plan so much. It was pretty much spontaneous. I just, I plan, in New York, I plan two months. From June 1st to July 27th. So that was from Paris to Amsterdam. The way I plan those two months is I only booked hotels and Airbnbs and flights slash trains between major cities. That was it. No other planning. 
I did not make an itinerary. I did not book museum. I did not book any tours in advance. Um, usually when I book a tour, maybe a few days before, not really too, too much before. So I didn't do any of that. Just flights and lodging, that's it. Flights, trains, and lodging, that's it. And then when I was in Stockholm, which was um, like middle of July, that's when I planned the rest of this trip all the way through September, mid-September. So that is how I plan. Also, just lodging and trains. I did not take any more planes after July, so lodging and trains, and that was it. And I would say plan that way if, if, if you can. Um, generally, you won't be going to cities where it requires you to plan too much ahead in terms of museums or tours. I think the only place you really have to do that is maybe Paris. If you want to go to, say, the Louvre, do plan a day that you're going to choose to go to the Louvre. And then a few days before you actually make it to France, do just buy your ticket. That's probably one of the few things you have to play, plan in advance. Um, otherwise, pretty much nothing else. Yeah, nothing else. Nicole says, if you stay six months in the UK and three months in Europe, you can stay for a very long time here. Trust me, I'm tempted, Nicole. I'm tempted, yeah. I hear music in the distance. I'm tempted, yeah. I would love to stay in Europe for longer. I think as a US citizen, I can technically stay in Ireland for six months. So that's awesome. And then Copenhagen, I mean, Denmark has its own policies. So technically I can like, I'm not sure, there, there's some loophole with uh, Denmark that people were telling me about, that Denmark technically has its own visa outside of the European Union. So yes, you're in Europe, but you're technically staying in a different country. Uh, I gotta research more into that, but yeah, there are ways to stay in Europe for a longer time as an American. Ron says, Ariel, be ready for how tall are you? How many steps you do? Uh, kind of questions later. <laughs> Ron, that's why I have the mods. The mods can answer those repeated questions. How long are you going to stay in Nice? Says uh, Mika. Next week is going to be a different place. Different place. We have just uh, two more weekends left. And it's going to be it's going to be a good poetic location i'll tell you that that's the first hint we're going somewhere poetic in terms of this avalon says yes better to clean the lines to avoid yeast that clings to the lining very important regular cleaning interesting uh avalon's talking about the beer process wendy says please don't go back to new york <laughs> Anthony says, good day, Ariel. Hello, everyone. Who's taking care of the plants in the back? Uh, back home, says Ashley. I don't have plants. I wouldn't have plants. Uh, I, while I'm not immersed to having plants, plants take a lot of work. Pets, too. That's the downside of owning either. Or having either, not owning. France is five times bigger than New York, or the size of Texas. Uh, thankfully, the trains are superb. Yes, Avalon, yes. The trains are superb. The geography does make it challenging to hop around between different regions of France. But the trains are indeed superb, yes. Monzon says, have you been to Texas? No, I have not been to Texas yet. us more one way you can guarantee more videos of awesome locations is becoming a patron patreon.com slash urbanist um, as with social media an income from social media is not always super predictable uh, so Facebook I was grateful enough to make a good amount of money 
uh, from Reels, but they recently removed the bonuses I was getting from Reels. So I don't have, I can't count on that income in these next few months or uh, until they bring it back, if they do, I hope, I hope they do. Um, so I don't have, I can't, can, can't count on that income. So patreon.com slash urbanist is one way you can increase the chances of seeing more interesting locations. So if it seems worth to you to pay $5 a month for extra content, extra tours, 360 tours, house museum tours, villa tours, we did a villa tour recently on Patreon. If it seems worth to you to pay $5 a month to travel from the comfort of your own phone, you can do that. Patreon.com slash urbanist. And that way, I can show you more stuff with the more patrons I have. And then eventually do cool things with production. Oh. Oh, I like this. Another. That's so good. What's the best channel for income? Monzon, the best income I get directly is from YouTube. YouTube is the best income source. Facebook has been good, but Facebook is sometimes very unpredictable. He says, uh, becoming a patron is well worth it. Yeah, I'm glad you think so. Uh, some people see it well worth it. You know, if, if you see the value in someone doing all the traveling, all the planning, all the booking, because booking, so people ask about planning. I might not be too intensive with planning, but there still goes a lot in considering where I'm going. Uh, I have to research, generally know where I'm going. So I may not plan an itinerary, but I do have to put in a lot of time to read about uh, the places I intend on going because I don't want to go to a place where I end up finding out, A, I'm spending too much money, B, there's nothing to do, or C, it's not that safe. So I got I to do a lot of reading in that uh, case. And then um, a lot of booking. Booking actually takes quite a, t a long time. I got to read reviews of hotels and Airbnbs because I also make videos of those places so I'll show you good places that are worth your time on video I got to choose places that are pretty close by so I don't spend all my time trying to commute around uh, which has happened before in other cities and then um, beyond that uh, I'm actually walking and doing all the transportation and all the uh, streaming and buying the sim cards and all those stuff so there's a lot of stuff that goes behind the scenes and there's people out there who enjoy this vicarious travel, where to them, it's, it's hard. They can't really travel as frequent as I can. So I'm glad to bring travel virtually to those people. Um, I think that's what some travel vloggers don't end up realizing. they underestimate the power of vicarious travel. That you can sit down and explore the world virtually. Of course, it's always great to live your life, to be in the present moment, to put down the screen and be in the here and now. But entertainment is a such a key aspect of all of our lives, all throughout millennia. Stories have been told, uh, at least since ancient Greek times, we've had stories. We've had, we had people go to the theater. We've had people do, and then even before, in prehistory, we have people drawing in caves. Caves were the ancient theaters of prehistory. So, entertainment is such crucial to our lives that why not provide a form of entertainment where you don't need to do any work in traveling. You can travel literally comfortably sitting down 
in your living room, in your garden, uh, while walking your dog, while doing work, <laughs> as some people do. And I think that's a really cool thing. I think that's a really cool thing. And some people, to them, this is the only way they can travel, uh, especially in today's world. Not everywhere is accessible. Here, you know, accessibility is a bit hard um, because there's not ramps everywhere. There's not elevators to get to a lot of places. So there's some places where it's awesome to show you that are not accessible to people who might have mobility issues or can't um, walk around as much as I can for whatever reason. So I think that's a really cool way of entertainment. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's uh, continue walking around. That was a great little beer, beer store. I rec recommend it. Uh, what's the name? It's called Beer Shop 06. Right here. Check them out. Nice. Pretty expensive for the beer, but it's okay. It's okay. You're paying for the views. <laughs> and cars nearly hitting you as they're parking. Vera says, I love that your videos are off the cuff. They capture true feeling of being here. Yes. Merci beaucoup. Great beer. Right next door, there's a wine shop. So we're back to the provincial market, which we passed. But let's go up here this time. Teacup says expensive is relative. Yeah, yeah, New York, that would be a good price because in New York, that could be $9. So it might be even a little bit more expensive. This one's called Elevation by Nicole Bruce. This lob says, I'm going to burst. Musical, musical numbers are allowed on this channel. Sally says, it's going to be 104 today in Washington State. Wow, there's a heat wave in Washington. Oh, wow. Good luck, Sally. Oh, my God. I'm surprised. I thought uh, Washington was known to be pretty ch uh, cool year round. Ms. Lop says, I enjoy that you're making us feel like we're out with a good friend and having a ball wherever you are. Yeah. I love the fact that your videos are off the cuff and unscripted, says Barris. They capture the true feeling of being wherever you are. Dr. Tachi says, it, it is really cool. Dr. Tachi, media professor. Thank you so much. I'm so glad. We appreciate you taking us on your uh, travels. My pleasure, Dr. Tachi. If that's coming from a media professor, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Tachi. Jennifer, enjoy Patreon. Ah, we got a new patron. We got a new super urbanist. Round of hearts to Jennifer for becoming a super urbanist. Thank you so much, Jennifer. I appreciate you. Round of hearts for Jennifer for becoming a super urbanist.
Oh, Sally says Eastern Washington is actually desert and we always get very hot weather. Oh, wow, Sally, I, I did not realize. I thought most of Washington was very forested. Uh, Sally, thank you so much for letting us know. Yeah, Sally, um, Sally's from Washington State in the, in the U.S. And I visited Seattle. I wish transportation, public transportation was easier in the U.S. because I spent two weeks in Seattle. I could have easily done a bunch of trade, day trips to nearby cities like Portland or, or gone, even gone to Vancouver or gone to Eastern Washington if there was a public transportation system. There isn't any, I would have had to use a car, um, which is a bit of a shame because yeah, Washington State is a pretty big state and there's forests and apparently the deserts as well. So wow, I didn't realize. Wow. Jay says, I'm a singer. Hey, cool. Ne Nebul says, rain is coming. Rain is coming. I hope you have an umbrella, someone said earlier. Yes, I do. Uh, Sally says, I know, I would love to show you wine country. Yeah, that's cool that Washington also has its own wine country. It's crazy to think that Washington is a pretty big state, so almost as big as France. It's a bit smaller, but almost. David says, are you going to con next? I already did a video of con, so check that out. I already did a video of con. Con, there's not much to see. It's more of a beach town so uh, and shopping. So I pretty much covered what needed to be covered in con. Check out that video after this one. Marianne, yes, I'm staying in the Cote d'Azur. This is my last weekend in Cote d'Azur. And then, as I mentioned, we're going to a place that's rather poetic for this journey. I'll leave it at that. Slav says, ooh, poetic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Grant says, that's a riddle, poetic. <laughs> that's all I'll say. Where's the sand, says Andrew. Andrew, as is the case with places all around the world, <laughs> there, there, there's some, some, some coastlines don't have sand. Also, this has been banked probably for hundreds of years. So this, these walls are probably very old. I'm not sure how old, they're, but they're probably more than 100 years old, minimum. Miss Fancy says in France? No, I'm sticking to France. No, there, there's no more other countries, just France.
Susie says, are you going to any place that's associated with Friedrich Nietzsche? I hope not. <laughs> I, if, if I did not need to read anything more about Friedrich Nietzsche, I would be a happy man. <laughs> Uh, no, no, I hope not. Letha says, can you re view my previous uh, travels? Yes, you can. The best way to see all my previous videos is a lot easier to search them up on YouTube, Urbanist Exploring Cities. Just type in the name. Go directly to the channel. I have playlists for each country. A playlist for each country. Urbanist Exploring Cities on YouTube. Or you can use the search. Just always put Urbanist and the name of the country or city. And you can generally find it that way. Or type of food sometimes. Uh, like for example, in Belgium I covered a lot of beer. In Lyon I covered uh, food. So. You can put in keywords as well and find it that way. Or you can see the videos all in chronological order. Sean says, did I become a nihilist? No, no, I just, I don't, quite the opposite. I don't really like Friedrich Nietzsche. He's talked about so much here in the French Riviera. Uh, to me, Friedrich Nietzsche is the antithesis of the vibes of the French Riviera. French Riviera is all carefree and relaxed and uh, a joie de vivre here. And Frederick Nietzsche, people don't know, spent time in the French Riviera. For some reason, the people who write the plaques for the history here like to mark everywhere that Frederick Nietzsche has been along this coast and where he lived and what he did. But people don't know, Frederick was a nihilist. He was a man who said that life was rather pointless and that there was no God and that there was no point in our existence. So why bother? And you can read more about stuff. He talked about other things, uh, philosophical, but in general, he, he was based a lot in, in kind of the pointlessness of life. I'm here in the south of France. I don't think his philosophies really mesh with the vibes of the joy of life that you see here in the south of France. Um, no wonder he's a German philosopher. <laughs> a lot of his uh, philosophies come from Germany and from Russia with like writers uh, that wrote uh, Note from Underground. Um, Dostoevsky as well, so yeah. <laughs> That's for more rainier places in the world. More dreary places. Places with a, more inland. They tend to be darker. They tend to have more rain. That can fit a little bit better. But here in sunny south of France, I don't think you need nihilism. <laughs> Major says, you have proved him wrong. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad I have been able to prove Friedrich Nietzsche wrong. <laughs> See, Friedrich Nietzsche, there is a god. Look at that. <laughs> See, Friedrich Nietzsche, life is, has a point. To look at a beautiful view like this. Speaking of Frederick Nietzsche, look who we have here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, look who we have here. Victor Hugo. Yes. That's good. Okay, I like that. Much better. Much better. This guy was a good writer. I like him. I was scared there for a moment. I was like, oh no. Oh no, a bust of Friedrich Nietzsche in the most beautiful area of Antibes. Oh no. <laughs> 
Uh, no, but it's Victor Hugo who wrote The Hunchback of Notre Dame, uh, Les Miserables, which, yes, um, the story is pretty sad in many moments, but there's a lot of hope within the story, so it's a beautiful story too. He was a really good writer, I think. When he says that was a bust of you. <laughs> Grant says you could tell the people on the benches were happy to be filmed. Susie says, most philosophers have depressing quotes. Uh, um, I, I know what you mean. Unfortunately, the university system in the U.S. teaches some very depressing philosophers. Um, and that's the case also here in France. France, I think, is, might be a worse offender when it comes to promoting philosophies that are very depressing. Uh, someone mentioned that in one of the comments. And that was very astute of them to observe. Yeah, a lot. Actually, some of the mo more depressing or very angry fueled philosophers do come from France, like Foucault is one of them. Jean-Paul Sartre as well. So it's a bit. It's a bit of a shame that also in the U.S. they teach those philosophers. Because there's a lot of beautiful philosophies out there that value life, value existence, and value the beauty of the world, and not only focus on the negative parts of our existence, which can get rather dreary because where energy flows, where attention goes, that thing will only continue to become more and more true. Veronique says, Rumi, Rumi, exactly. Rumi is a great philosopher. Nexus says, uh, oh, he's quoting Frederick Nietzsche. He says, without music, life would be a mistake. I mean, that is a good quote, so I do appreciate that from him. Susie says, there are people who say that we're in hell right now. <laughs> if this is hell, goddamn. It's a, it's a nice place. At least here in the south of France. Tikov says, any good cemeteries out here? There's a cemetery by the sea, which Nebul was telling me about yesterday. I forgot where he was mentioning it from, um, so I don't know. But there is one cemetery by the sea in this area. Here we have another artwork. Is the seawater warm or cold there, Marina? It should be warm. I think the Mediterranean in the summertime is generally warm, but not as warm as the Caribbean. Caribbean, I think, is known as some of the warmest waters in the world. David says, we all need more positives than negatives. We just need to stop watching TV uh, and start watching things like this. <laughs> I'm glad, David. Thank you so much for the compliment. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We do need more positives in the world. Yeah. 
David made a awesome comment. Yeah, yeah. A lot of media, modern media, tends to be rather depressing. Uh, focuses a lot on the negatives, and I like you know uh, there's travel vloggers that do great work, and they are very popular, so they're doing something right. But they focus so much on places that are kind of. They're not the smoothest places on earth. Places that are a little bit more challenging to travel to. I think that's what fascinates people, including myself. I am fascinated by their content. But I hear a lot of travel vloggers out there when people ask them, hey, do you visit France or do you visit Italy uh, or, or England? A lot of them kind of shrug it off as if it were a boring place to visit. I so disagree. I think they're popular for a good reason. People flock here for centuries. I mean, even the ancient Romans. There are, there are areas along these coasts that ancient Romans used as uh, resorts, as places to have a vacation for good reason. And uh, as I saw, showed England and Scotland and Ireland, those places might not be known for sun, fun in the sun, but they are immensely beautiful in other ways. So um, I appreciate those travel vloggers, but I would encourage them to take a look again at these beautiful places in Western Europe and parts of the US. They're so filled with wonder and awe and peace, and calm, and art, and history, and beauty, and good people, and good food. So if you are considering to travel yourself, because I have people watching of all ages, but I also have people who are pretty young, late teens, early 20s, watching my videos, don't fall into the trap of thinking that going to a south of France or to a Rome, Italy, or to an Ireland is not cool. Don't fall into that trap because um, a lot of travel media especially made by people who are around my age, a little bit younger, some a little bit older, would make you think that these places are boring, would make you think that you're uh, doing it easy. And I would say hogwash. These places are amongst the most beautiful places you can visit in your life. And if you have the opportunity in your 20s or whatever age, but if you're in your 20s, early 20s, where you're starting to consider to travel, you don't need to go to the hardest places on earth. <laughs> Though they could be fun. And I don't have first-hand experience, so uh, I'm sure they're fun in other respects, but I would say don't knock places like this. They're immensely gorgeous, and you can learn, uh, I assume, as much as you can learn in any other country that it might be a little bit more harder to travel to. And I think life is, Life is long and life is also short, so you might as well enjoy the beauty of life when you can, in the path of least resistance. Because, for example, Bruce Lee said it best. Bruce Lee said that life is like water. Water can seep in through the cracks of the rocks, or it can become a gigantic wave and crash through a cliffside. But the point is, water always finds the easiest path through. So be like water. As he said, be like water, my friend. Same thing when it comes to travel. You can go to places that are, you know, really grind your gears. I guess, you know, in a way that... In a way that's fun, in a way that's interesting, but also... 
there's a certain joy of going to a place that's just easy to go, easy to come, easy to enjoy. A place where you feel safe, a place where you feel relaxed, a place that is clean and protected. I think those places are worth visiting too. For the sake of going to a place that's just fun and easy, no resistance, relaxation, being like water. And that looks like a big, de big deck right there. Wow, that really does look like a big deck. Oh my god. Susie says, I am hypnotized. <laughs> Hey, Isabel says, I'm so happy you showed up on my FB newsfeed back in February. I'm seeing countries I've not visited, uh, but love seeing it through your eyes. Or should I say iPhone? <laughs> nice. I'm so glad you're tuning in. I appreciate that, Isabel. And thank you so much for being a mega urbanist. That's so kind of you. Wow, so cool. People are building these uh, standing rocks here. Oh, they did a good job. Sally says, I haven't seen the ocean in so long. Tunita says, have you had a swim? No, I have not had a swim. I've wanted to, but you know, it's a lot of logistical work to go to the beach. <laughs> I don't know how people do it. It's a lot of work. Like I, I wanted to go to the beach, but I, I was uh, considering it. I was like, oh my, I had to find the beach first. I'm traveling solo, so I can't carry too much stuff. So I gotta find a beach either with lockers or be able to be willing to take a swim or you know go into the water and not fear for my stuff being stolen. Uh, the third thing is I don't like rocky beaches. So where I'm staying is right by the rocky beach. So I would have to take a train to get to the sandy beaches. Fourth thing is I don't have swim trunks. Also, I don't have towels. <laughs> I would have to maybe go to a private beach with the uh, with the beds and things like that, with the the, the lounge tables. Uh, I gotta do a lot of stuff. Uh, I gotta buy like sandals. I don't have flip flops with me, so I gotta buy sandals too. I gotta do a lot of stuff just to go to the beach. It's too much work. I'm not sure how people do that. Beaches are stressful. I'd rather just walk. Let me know if uh, you uh, have felt the same. I commend people who can easily go to the beach. Deanna says, I have that book. I can hear his voice saying that, Bruce Lee. Oh, yeah, yeah, Bruce Lee did write a book about that. Yeah, I'm quoting his uh, interview with Charlie Rose, which was really good. Grant says, just easier to go to a new beach. I think, I think so, Grant. I think, I think that might be the easiest way. B, B says, yeah, going to the beach is a schlep. <laughs> yeah, it feels like a schlep. Unless if you're close to your home or you specifically packed for beach weather, which I did not. I did not pack for beaches. So I don't have my swim trunks. I have to buy some. Desi says, what time do cl things close down here? So a lot of restaurants close during the day, 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. They reopen at 7 and close, they are open maybe until 9 to 11 p.m. Depends on the restaurant. Uh, bars too, cafes as well. So things are a bit quieter in terms of business during, between the hours of 2 to 7 p.m. Uh, if you want to increase your chances of finding 
things to eat and drink, you have to go more towards the town center. Or the beach, uh, private beaches also tend to have restaurants that are open the entire day, uh, which is nice. Otherwise than that, at night, most things start closing about 11 p.m. You can find a drink or a bite to eat, probably until midnight, depends on the place. Ron says, why go with trunks, towels, and flip-flops so you can go all natural? Yeah, you can. Also, another thing, a lot of the trains here um, have, uh, I'm not sure how you call it. Um, carpet is not the word. Uh, they're made with cloth. Do let me know. A push street. They have a push street. It's not like in in New York City, where you go to trains and they're plastic. So uh, if you're coming from the beach, you're not going to get everything all messy. But here you do, if you come to the beach and you get on the train. All right, let's do a bench review. John says, where are all the fishermen? They must be at fishing villages. So I don't think, not every city has a fishing area. So I think there must be, villages are more specifically areas where fishermen uh, dock and port. This is amazing, very relaxing. Wow. Today there's not that much sun, so there's clouds, that's nice. I'm assuming that there might be some shade with this palm tree. The bench is nice, but it's good with the railing. The railing really makes it, I think. And you have two levels of railing, so if you are a shorter individual, if you have what people say a height deficiency, if you're a short king, then you have two levels. If you're a, a tall king, then you have a, the upper level. And then with the waters crashing right here, oh my God, the views right there, look at that, wow. Beautiful views. The soothing sounds of cars whizzing by behind us. <laughs> There's a cafe close by as well, which is nice. Um, wow. Yeah, with the views of the Mediterranean Sea. It's amazing. Love being able to put my feet up. Desi says, all that walking your feet must be killing you. Ah, you know, calves. Calves are the, the thing. One, one, one of my calves gets more tight than the other one, uh, which is a bit annoying, but otherwise... I'm pretty, I feel pretty good walking long distances. Look at that. Okay, Google, play a gape 
by Nicholas Brittell. Alexa, play Agape by Nicholas Brittell. I think it's a perfect song for right now. I, oh wow, this is an amazing bench. Amazing bench. I would give this bench a very good, mmm, with the sea breeze. Oh wow. Mmm. Wow. Yeah. Nine point five out of ten. Sean says, why is it minus 0.5? Sean, uh, I think once you start crossing 9.6, it's, it's get, it gets very hard for a bench to get that high. Very hard. I mean, above 9.0 is pretty rare. There might be only 12 benches more than 9.0 in the past two years or so. Not too many 9.0 benches. Those are Uber benches. There might be a little bit more, like 15 benches have got an Uber bench rating. 9.6 and above is super rare. Only about four benches have gotten, or five benches have gotten 9.6. Barry says, wow, the music matches the mood. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, someone just mentioned this. Someone reminded me. I use that song a lot. Uh, who was the person who mentioned it? The miles those conferences have walked, says Deanna. Yeah, these I bought in, uh, when did I buy these? I bought these in England. I bought these in England. This, this trip to England, uh, June Anthony says, dang it, both my Alexa and Google responded. There we go, you got twice the music now. Mika says, bye bye, had to buy rose wine and soca for tonight. Hey Mika, thank you so much for tuning in. Carla says, I need some bright color conferences. These are already white. Ariel is answering the question of the ages. What's the point of life? This, my friends, is the point of life. Yep, that's right, Ms. Lam. Right here. Sally says, do your calves ache from all the walking? No, I, I just get, um, the, my calves get tight. Just a bit, mostly my left calf. It's, it's, a, it's a blessing. Basically everyone walks in a particular man, manner. And people have their own gait as well, which means the way they walk. But well, aside from that, it, the problem is you can sometimes start walking too much in a way that is negatively affecting you and people don't notice. So sometimes they say, oh, I got a, my left knee uh, locks up or my toes uh, feel achy, like one of them feels achy uh, or I get, the calf gets tight. 
or whatever or your back your lower back aches and it's more towards one side and a lot of people think it's just because it's just because maybe because of age but no it's because of how you're walking how you're moving and those are all indications of how to better move so when you start having effects on one side it means you're rat walking pretty lopsided you're walking you're putting more emphasis on one side which is natural for all humans to do uh, so this also happens to people who work out bodybuilders some of them tend to be a little bit better with their right than they're with their left or vice versa so sometimes a bodybuilder might have a bicep that's just a little bit bigger than the other one and they get tests uh, especially the professional ones they get tests to see um, how even they are in their body composition so if you start getting uh, a tight calf from one side it's an indication like hey you're kind of leaning to one side so walk a bit straighter have a bit better posture so pay attention to your body your body, body is working with you your body is telling you good information so if you have a pain if you have an ache if you have a tightness don't resent it don't resist it listen just listen like you would listen to the waves of the sea just listen DS says good posture is important indeed it is It's about to rain. I hope everyone enjoyed this live stream. I'll be back at 8 p.m. tonight for a philosophical chat. And I'm cooking some food, a dinner, French style. So come with me for a beautiful adventure in the kitchen of both culinary and intellectually. <laughs> and an adventure of the heart. <laughs> So join me for a dinner tonight at 8 p.m. French time, 2 p.m. New York City time. Tomorrow there'll be another live video at um, 3 p.m. French time as well. And then live videos for one more weekend? One more weekend. Do I have a second weekend? I have a second weekend, I think. All the way through September 10th. September 10th will be the last live video of this trip. So thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in, keeping awesome, and always keep on exploring from Antibes here. Beautiful Antibes. Nice area. Seems like the beaches are nice. There's more beaches down there that one can access. Do your research beforehand. And if you want private beaches, go to the next city over at Cannes. There's private beaches as well. There's other YouTube videos that go more deeper into the best beaches. Thank you, everyone, so much for tuning in, keeping awesome, and always keep on exploring. Au revoir, mes amis.